Hello again, my DIY loving friends, and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. In today's DIY video, get ready to transform your home with stunning high-end home decor on a Dollar Tree budget. Get inspired, and let's go DIY together. For this first DIY, I'm using one of these bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree, as well as four of these little wooden people I got on Amazon, and I'll link them for you in the description box below. It comes in a large package with all these assorted sizes, and they're really useful for so many projects. I'm also using the lightest color of these three furniture markers that I got at Dollar Tree because the lightest color matches the natural color of the bamboo cutting board so perfectly. I'm going to use this marker to stain all four of the little wooden people. It's inexpensive and super quick and easy to color these little wooden people this way. Plus, no stain or paint mess. You gotta love that. I'm using these wood people as legs for this bamboo cutting board. So I space a leg in each of the four corners using two Jenga blocks to evenly distance all of them in those four corners. Then I use some super glue wood glue, also from Dollar Tree, to attach each of those legs. And in just over a minute into this video, we have DIY number one, my farmhouse table riser, which I fully intend to use in my kitchen on the counter because I love the natural wood look and the farmhouse charm of this ultra easy but expensive looking wood riser. This next DIY begins with these tumbling tower blocks for all my serious tumbling tower block fans. I got you. Using some super glue wood glue, I start by making 12 rows of three blocks glued end to end, as you can see right here. So that's going to be 36 blocks to start with. Once those dry, I turn three of them vertically and I'm going to place one block in three places spaced evenly apart that are connecting each of these three block sets together for a total of six blocks that are going to connect these three sets of three as you can see me do right here. And this is going to make up one wall. We are making four walls total. Spoiler alert, we're making a box. So we are using 24 blocks for this part. And for those of you keeping track at home, altogether we have used 60 tumbling tower blocks so far. Once my four walls have dried, it's time to paint them. I am using Folk Art Antique Wax, which I will link for you below, and I'm painting all four walls on all sides and all of the edges. I use a dry paper towel to rub off the excess wax as I'm painting, and then I'm going to set the four walls aside to dry. While the wax dries, I assemble the base for my box using my super glue wood glue. I'm going to glue together four sets of three blocks that are side by side. I'm also doing two sets of two blocks side by side and one set of eight blocks also glued side by side and that eight block set will be in the middle of the base. If you need to, you can pause and replay the video to see the exact layout, but just match what I have right here. Then I attach all of these pieces together to make one flat wood base. The base uses 24 blocks total, so adding that to the blocks from the walls, we are using a grand total of 84 blocks for this project. I paint the base with the antique wax as well, but I only painted the top and the sides of the base since the bottom would not be seen. Using some Dollar Tree jute, I wrap a piece of the jute in a crisscross around the middle of each of my four walls, securing the jute in the back with a dab of hot glue. Now I'm going to wrap the jute three times diagonally, and then I'm going to wrap it in the other direction three times diagonally, so it's a crisscross, and we're going to do that on all four of our walls. To assemble the box, I'm using some wood glue to attach each of the four walls to the base, and then I'm waiting a little bit and holding each wall in place until the glue sets up a little bit. Once the four walls are glued to the base, I'm going to have to adjust everything to try and straighten out the box to the best of my ability, because you guys know these Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks are never totally straight, so some adjusting will be necessary. And then I allow the entire box to dry overnight. Now, I wasn't totally sure what kind of base I wanted for this box to give it some height, so I did paint this wood box from Dollar Tree with the same antique wax, just so that I would have it as an option. 
And I also had this Dollar Tree candle holder painted from a previous project, which I wanted as an option for this as well. And this is my Django Block window pane box, and maybe it's a little bit rustic, or maybe a little bit farmhouse, but I love this, with a base or without, as a plant stand, or in a bathroom, or a kitchen, so upscale looking, just another great high-end tumbling tower block option. And moving on to our next DIY, I am starting with these two pieces of a cardboard roll. Not as flimsy as a paper towel roll, but a thick, strong cardboard roll that I trimmed down using a box cutter, like an aluminum foil roll or something like that. And I'm also using these craft paper straws I got on Amazon, and I will link them below. I like them because when painted, they really look like wood, and I cut a bunch to the same height as one of my cardboard rolls, and they are paper, so they are very easy to cut with the scissors. And I didn't want to waste the leftover pieces of the straw, so I trimmed down my second cardboard roll to the same size as those straw pieces so that I could then use up all the straw leftovers. Using some hot glue, I attach all of the straws around the whole cardboard roll one next to another so that none of that roll was going to be visible anymore. And I use the scissors to trim the top pieces to line up with the top of the roll so that everything is even. I then did the same thing to the shorter cardboard roll as well. I wanted to cover up the tops of the straws, which were white on the inside and not very pretty. So I decided to use some small wood beads that I had in my stash. I will link these for you below, but you can use the wood beads from Dollar Tree for this too. I used some hot glue and I attached the beads around the whole top edge of both the tall and the short straw covered cardboard rolls. Using some antique wax, I paint both the straws and the beads on top generously with the wax, one or two coats, until they have a nice warm brown tone that I'm going for. I still wasn't happy with how the spaces in between the beads looked, so using some jute twine, I wrapped the jute around each of the beads, securing the jute with hot glue, both behind and in front of each of those beads, just in an effort to fill up some of that empty space up at the top, hide that hot glue, and to make the whole thing a little bit more polished looking. And just as a final touch, I used a piece of Dollar Tree nautical rope wrapped once around the top under the beads and then again once along the bottom around the project. I only used one of the pieces of nautical rope though on the bottom of the shorter one, not at the top of that one. And these are my paper straw mini vases. Now, I just love the fact that these are made out of paper straws and they can look this good. A little neutral or a boho vibe, just a cute way to display some succulents or small greenery stems. And again, all just made out of paper and cardboard. This next DIY begins with this wood square coaster from Dollar Tree, as well as 16 tumbling tower blocks, which we are gluing into eight sets of two blocks glued end to end. Then I take my two block sets and I glue two of them together so that they will form a corner, as you can see what I'm doing right here. I do that with all eight, um, all sets, all eight sets of the two, and I end up with four corner pieces total. And if you need to pause and rewind, you can do that here. Next, I have 12 jumbo wood craft sticks. I got at Home Depot, but I will link some similar ones down below for you. I'm gonna mark and use the scissors to cut all 12 craft sticks to the same length as one side of my wood square coaster. Using a mixture of plain water and antique wax, I am going to paint all 12 cut craft sticks on both the front, the back, and the sides, the edges, using a dry paper towel to wipe off any of the excess wax mixed with water. And then I put it aside so that they can fully dry. I use the same antique wax and water mixture to paint the wood coaster on the top and on the sides. Then I use a mixture of water and folk art white chalk paint, which I will link for you below, to whitewash the four Jingle Block corner pieces, and I layer on as many coats of the white as I need to achieve the finish that I'm looking for, which is white with some wood tone peeking through. To assemble my crate, yes, we are making a wood slat crate. I take my four corner pieces and I'm using some wood glue. I'm going to attach one corner piece to each corner of the wood coaster. And again, I'm trying to keep things as straight as possible because 
Neither the wood coaster nor the, the Jenga blocks are perfectly straight. Oh, Dollar Tree, why do you torture us like this? So I do my best to adjust and to keep everything as level as I possibly can. Next, I take four of my craft sticks and I want to start by gluing one craft stick to the bottom of each side of the crate. However, I don't want them at the very bottom against the coaster. So I use a piece of paint stir stick just as a placeholder um, so that each of the four bottom slats, which are my craft sticks, are just a tiny bit raised up from that coaster base. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It is not as complicated as I'm making it sound. And I attach the craft sticks along the inside of those Django block corners with some wood glue to hold the craft stick in place. After the bottom craft sticks are in place, I take four more of my craft sticks and I'm going to place those at the very top of my Jenga block corner so that I glue each of the slats or those craft sticks, whatever you want to call them, to the top of each side of the crate. I also use some of those little clips from Dollar Tree to hold those top slats in place until the glue has a chance to fully set. Once the top and the bottom slats have set, I take my last four craft sticks and I want to place each one in the middle between the top and the bottom slats so that there is an even amount of space between each of those three slats on each side of my crate. I attach those slats the same way using wood glue and attaching them to the inside of the jangle block corners. Then I'm gonna set the whole thing aside to fully dry overnight. And this is my wood slat crate, and I tell you, this is probably my favorite. I can't believe how modern and lovely this crate turned out. Whether you use it for plants or hand towels or anything at all, this upscale and high-end looking piece of decor is truly a winner in my book. But as usual, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these Dollar Tree DIY high-end home decor on a budget was your favorite and why. I love hearing from all of you. And if you've enjoyed this DIY video, there's another one waiting for you. Just click the link on your screen for more Medicated Housewife DIYs. Until next time, my name is Sarah. I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.